Hi and welcome to RTG Retro Tech Guardian. Uh, right, today's video uh, we have the um, Hitachi CPT 0652. Uh, it's a colour TV radio cassette deck. Now I've done a video on this in the past. If you go through the videos you'll see I've done a video of it working. Um, the tape deck wouldn't work, it needs belts. The TV was working fine and the radio was working fine. Now in that video I also said that I wanted to make this into a project uh, to bring into the 21st century. So the idea is to modernize it and update it to bring it into the 21st century. So the first part of that, because it will be a multi-part series this, because they will take some time to do each module. The first part of this is I want to add Bluetooth functionality to this machine. Now, I had a look around and I thought, well, do I want to be connecting to the sound output stage and or inputs and then like amplifying it through the normal amplifier and then what setting would you put this on? Radio, FM, radio, TV, whatever. So I thought, well, what do I want to be doing really with it? So I thought the best way to do it is I bought one of these little Bluetooth modules. Now, this normally has a car cigarette lighter attached to it. And as you can see, I've prepped this for the video already. I've attached some wires already. Now, this would have had normally uh, a piece like that on it. And it would connect into your uh, car cigarette lighter. And then what it lets you do is it lets you tune in the radio. So you can choose which channel. So you pick one that's got no static. It lets you find what radio station you want to connect it to. And then basically you connect this to any Bluetooth device and then it'll play it through the radio so you can use the speaker and everything on this. So I thought, well, that's by far the easiest way. The only got to do thing I've got to do is take this apart and then obviously add it to um, add it to the inside of this. So and all I've got to do is can find a 12 volt power source, so roughly 12 volts, um, so that it will power up. Now this is the other end of that board that was attached here like so uh, more fingers and thumbs there we go so that was connected to there originally now i unsoldered that so one side of this is your five volt side and you get plus and ground plus five volt and ground on that side now the other side is saying it's the aerial which is a big ground here uh, and then straight to direct 12 volts so i unsoldered that um, and I've connected four wires because you've got 12 volt on one side and ground and 5 volt and ground on the other. Uh, so that's why I unsoldered that was because I didn't want that sticking through. Obviously I would have had to drill a big hole in the top of this and I don't want to do that just yet. So anyway, before we start and take this apart, just dead quickly, uh, I've been asked a few times, um, uh, mainly by email, uh, I show sometimes items that I've gone to the car boot or I've bought cheap online which aren't really anything to do with like you know 70s 80s and 90s oh hold on Ted fell over there look. and um, basically I, I buy that stuff cheap uh, I clean it up test it all make sure it's working and then sell it on and that helps fund the channel um, the, the items I'm buying aren't mega expensive uh, for everything that I've bought for the updates for this unit alone has cost me about £45. Um, and then obviously I bought the unit itself and I can't remember. It's in that first video. It wasn't much. Um, but again, it's just what I do to help fund, to buy new items like this, to be able to bring more content to the channel. Um, it's something I enjoy doing. So... That's why I'm buying and showing sometimes some of the stuff that I've bought. Uh, the idea is I will sell that. I don't tell you guys where I'm selling it because I'm not trying to get you guys to watch it so I can sell items. That's not what I'm doing. So I keep that separate. I don't tell anybody that I'm selling them, um, you know, or where I'm selling them. I just put them up for sale. So anyway, that's got that out of the way. So, right. Uh, and as you can see, sorry, yeah, I've connected four cables here, two grounds, a plus uh, 12 volt and a plus 5 volt wire ready to connect to this now this has got really long wire on because I can't remember inside here how far away the terminal is I want to connect to so obviously we can cut that in situ 
And the idea, idea of these being loose tails like this is that I can push them through these vent holes here. I don't know if they show up in the video. I think just there you can see that square. There. Well, I'm assuming that's a vent hole and I'm hoping it is because I want to be able to push the cable through there and then just make that on top of here like so and then just be able to use it. So that's the idea for that. So let's get this apart first. Now the big gaping hole here is the power supply for it which again I've showed on another video and that just comes separate. You've got your um, AC in and there's also a DC in 12 volt socket there and then that just connects just there there's a little uh, socket connects to a pin there and then that powers up that machine so while we're doing this I've got the power out because I don't need it at the moment um, and because obviously this is a CRT TV CRTs do hold quite a kick um, so I've basically I've not um, I've not had this powered up for a very long time. Um, it's probably been a good few months now, to be honest. Um, so yeah, so what I need to do now is remember how this comes apart. Now, because I did take it apart in the previous video, just to show it insides. So we'll just undo this. I assume it's just the bottom ones I need to undo. I don't think it will be that one as well. Or will it? It might be actually. So we'll have another look at that now. So there's another one. Oh yeah, I've taken them out previously. So I'll take them out again just in case. Oh, if I remember rightly, I think this holds the uh, handle on. So we'll just quickly undo this. Oh no, that seems to be holding on. Now I do remember the tuning knob for the uh, radio has to come out. And then I think, I think all these have to come off. Which is, um, Volume, tone, radio band, and the selection switch. Now, obviously what I'm doing today is I'm connecting this Bluetooth module via FM. So this will only work on an FM radio. Um, it will not work on an old medium wave radio. It does need an FM signal. Um, so I thought I'd better mention that so that people are aware. Uh, right. right, so it wants to come off. Oh, there we go. Let me just pause at it and away it comes. Right, so we've got a speaker connected. So let's pull those terminals off. There we go. And yes, they are vent holes in the back. Excellent. Now, as you can see, it's very dirty inside, um, but the bit that we're going to be working on is this top bit. And just looking down here for the main input for power. Uh, it is. Is that over here? I'll come over here in a second, have a look. So, oh yeah, it's underneath there, so it's this here. So, oh, that's a shame. It's got, uh, it's sealed, it's a sealed. So I'm going to try and find out where that goes to, which is the 12 volt here, which is this one. And then connects. Okay. So let's just undo this. I'm 
glad to see there's plenty of room on the inside for future updates. It's been a while I can remember what this looked like on the inside. So there's your other switch. So where are you? Right, so that plug won't just come apart. So I need to try and find a 12 volt cable where that goes to. Well, it would be right in the front of this, wouldn't it? Ah, okay. And that's where I wanted to connect it to, was this here. So, I might have to uh, cut this cable. Because uh, I don't really want to have to take the whole thing apart just to get to the 12 volt source. So, let's have a look. As you can see, there's plenty of length in that. Uh, do I? I do have some heat shrink, um, which would cover these up nicely. I think that's going to be about the only way I'm going to be able to do that, isn't it? But I don't know which is positive and which is negative, but of course I can find a negative and test that. I do have my multimeter here. I do believe this is center negative on this. So let's put it on diode test. There we go. So we can connect the center pin there. Uh -uh. No, it is. Out of pin negative. Okay. Is that definitely a negative? Where am I? Yep. Yep. Okay, so it's a center pin positive on this. I could connect this up and check that, but looking at that. Yep, the DC in says the center pin is positive. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this cable here and we're going to re-split uh, it down a bit and then we will solder that 12 volt supply to that. So we'll give that a snap. We'll get the ends. I'll tell you what, let's turn the little tiny soldering iron on while we're waiting. So I'm going to need that anyway. Let's just get that with a really long wire out of the way for a second so I don't start burning things. Right, so we'll I've got automatic wire stripping somewhere, there we go. He's tightening up a little. And again. There we go, there's one. Just tighten them up a bit more. That was better. Right. Now I want to. Take 
Put this back on diode and we'll give this a quick test so so the white line is your positive so the white line is the positive okay now I want to tin these but before I twist these I want to be able to connect this up now, I don't need that long a lead on this so I might as well Cut them. I'll whip these off with this because they're really thin. Okay. So, while I'm waiting for the solder iron to warm up, I'm going to nip just into the other room and go and get. Um, and get my heat shrink so I can put the heat shrink on the other side before I start doing the soldering and then solder the wires together and then find I can't get the heat shrink on because that wouldn't be the first time I've done that so okay just bear with me one second I will be back shortly very well prepared of me wasn't it not right okay so now I have my heat shrink um, and it looks like I've only got red left anyway so they're both gonna have to be red so let's cut that to length uh, do you know what let's give it plenty Right, so the line should be hot enough. So we'll pull them apart a bit more. We'll put a piece of heat shrink on that side. One piece of heat shrink on that side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that across there. So when I solder those connections together. I'm not going to drop any solder into the machine instead of on this plastic box, which I don't care about. Okay, so I'm going to get my solder. By the way, I do use um, a 60-40 tin lead mix. Um, I've always preferred lead solder. Um, it's just my preference. So I'll just clean the tip up a sec. Okay, there goes one of the knobs flying off. Right. So we'll get some heat into this and get some solder on that. There's one side. There's the other. Okay. Tin these. Get some heat into it. There you go. Bit more salt right there. Well, that wire gets quite warm because it's quite thick. the white wire there yes so what I want to do is get these two put together 
Well, this has got to be open. I could do with three hands. Let's see if. Uh, let's see if we can manage to do this somehow. Right, I tell you what. Let's do the negative one first because it wants to sit up in the air there, that, and that's fine with me. Much better connection than that. Let's do a bit more solder on the iron. Come on. That's a better seal. Right. Now we'll do this one. Okay, looks like it might be all right just down there. Just on there. Okay, yep, that's got a good seal. Turn that iron off a sec. So we've got the heat shrink over there. And we'll just give this a quick blast with some heat. And try not to burn me thumb in. done there's another one done okay so that should now give me 12 volts to that so now I want to try and get this back in so that the sockets in place so let's see if we can get that Square section was like that. Okay. And like so, missing the wires. Yep, that wants to go in there. So, let's see if we can get that to fit in there nicely. one started get the other one clamp hand to there there we go so this is the power connector to the main unit now screwed back in now we have 12 volt power to this now this thing i want to pass the wires all of these wires through one of these little holes here so we can start soldering them on now i would if i could like to get that somewhere around here so let's have a quick look so can I get them all through the same hole? That's the question. So let's just give them a little twist together first. So. No, that one's gone haywire. This is quite fiddly. Like I say, the reason why I want to use the, um, one of those little holes is that I didn't actually want to start cutting holes in this machine. Now, I know when I do the other modifications, I've got to put a multi-switch in. And I know that that multi-switch will require me to, to do that. But I don't really have much choice in that. I'd rather not put any holes in this but um i think i will have to for some of the stuff that's going in right 
right, okay. Have they all gone in? Yes, they have. The idea is, I want this. To be flush here, so you don't see the holes. Okay, somewhere around there. Now all these connections here need soldering to this little fella here. Now, I do want to eventually stick this to the case, but this is just me doing this as a simple test. So I am going to get some masking tape to uh, wrap that up with so it doesn't short out. <coughs> and hopefully that will do the trick. So, right, I have no idea if I've damaged any of this. I did test the actual unit before I started putting it in and it was seen to be working, but I suppose only time will tell. So, uh, I don't think I can get that any closer really. It's giving me a bit more length to do this soldering. And again, I don't really want to solder on top of the actual, there we go. So I do need my loop because when it comes to writing that small, I am blind. Actually, I don't because I can remember that that's the positive side and the big bit's ground. So, so what I need is, if I remember rightly, I did, plus Y bolt is white, so that one, so we'll turn the shoulder line back on a sec, I'll trim this wire ever so slightly, I have pre-tinned these, but they are extremely thin. Um, I took apart an old USB um, cable because it came with four cables obviously and a USB cable, two for power, two for data. So I thought, hmm, ideal, I'll use that. And then it wasn't until afterwards that I realised just how thin that was. <clears throat> but uh, we will connect it all up anyway and we will see what happens. Now the only thing is the output of this power supply is 17 volts. Now according to the spec on this it will take um, from 11 volts up to 24. So I'm hoping 17 will be okay. There's only one way to find out. And actually, would that be a DC output or a... Do you know what? Maybe I should try that. Maybe I should find out if this is a DC output or not. Because that could be quite important. So let's get this plugged in. Can't believe I didn't try that before. I don't know if this power's on with no power. We'll see. Okay, now where's that there? Oh, no, how am I going to get into there and there? Oh, I know how. I do have, uh, if this will fit, okay. I do have this little bad boy, now this is just a cable I use to test um, power supplies but it should it isn't the right size for that. It's close, but not quite. Now I've got it on, I can get it off, and it'll probably break it. Oh, no. Didn't break it at least. Well, it's in a, to an extent. Let's put this on the bolts. And 
to see if it is DC and that's if it powers up anyway it might be switched by the actual unit itself overload on 20 volts wow 23.2 volts okay well it says 17 on the tin so obviously it's not a switch power mode so the power supply so it probably generates a higher current a higher voltage so that when you turn things on so again let's hope that this really is 24 volts as well as 12 we'll soon find out i suppose and we'll find out together when it goes bang live on i was going to say tv it's not tv is it bloody youtube right okay so so that is the plus five gram which is this green one so that needs to be connected there Okay, now that's plus five volt on this side. Yeah. So now this needs connecting to that one. Okay. Now that's your plus twelve volts here. your ground on the 12 volt side now the reason why I didn't stick the two grounds together is that on that board it mentions that this ground which is the 12 volt side is actually the aerial for the Bluetooth so I thought well you know I'll keep them separate you know. now like I can say this isn't the best solution this is just me covering this so that I will get some double-sided tape and the next time we open this up I will mount this properly with double-sided tape up on the inside and um, I probably will coat it um, with something to stop that from uh, conducting and shorting something out but for now that will do because this is only really a test and then once I come to it I mean, as you can see, the machine's filthy. Uh, once I've got all the others, obviously, I've not done this before, so I don't know if this will work. Again, I didn't realise that was 23 volts, so I'm just hoping that this works on 24 volts as well as 12. It does say it does. So, uh, but then it is um, just a cheap product, so we never know. Okay, so... Now then, that aerial leads. So this has to be a lot closer. Okay. And then, we put the one back on that one. He says, does it just come straight back off? I wish I had better eyes. Kids today, in front of your phones and your computers all day long, trust me, it will not do your eyes any favours. When people say, moderate, moderate your use of things, trust me, it's a good idea. I've spent hours in front of screens when I was repairing computers and, and laptops and then doing research for learning about all the new technology that was being introduced, etc, etc. I spent so many hours in front of TV screens, which have absolutely, of oh, monitors, and they've absolutely killed my eyes. Right, now then, now we're going to try and get this back now. 
I'm not going to screw this back together properly because I want to test it because I'm impatient like that. So I was thinking we'll test it and then we'll screw it all back together. And that's it. I can get all this back in here without breaking anything because I don't really want to break anything. Okay. Okay, that's gone on there now. Ah, there you go, it just kind of fell on. Now, I'm going to need the tuning knob, obviously. Now there's uh, a notch in that and a notch there, so it only goes one way. That's it, go for the notch. Now, all these have got notches too, so they'll only go in one position. What I usually do, which I didn't do today, was turn everything to the left. And then when you put these on, you can see if the little dots are in the right place. And then you can test them all. So, tone. So that one should be right to the left. And volume should be right to the left. Okay. Now, obviously, again, this will be stuck to the top of there. But as you can see, we didn't put a hole in anything, which is what I wanted. So, now then, we've got to get this power supply in. So, this does just push in quite firm. Hoping that the top will stay on. Yeah, it did. Excellent. Right. So, what we're going to do is, is get it off the screws because that will help, I'm sure. Uh, that's off. Power's off. It says it's on tape. So, we'll plug this in. Uh, now, you can see as soon as I plugged it in, that's come on and if I don't know if you can see the screen very well or not but it's saying 104.5 for tuning now I was actually going to take it down to about 102 because I know where I live there's not much on the radio frequency 102 okay so that is on already of course it would be because that power supply is on all the time so now if we turn this to radio and I get my computer for a second now I'm going to be connecting to a Spotify account uh, a float um, now this gentleman has kindly let me um, use his uh, channel uh, and his music uh, on my channel uh, so I do have his permission to uh, use this so now we've got to connect to it by Bluetooth so Bluetooth add a Bluetooth device add a Bluetooth or other device Bluetooth let's see if it finds it press it's been such a long time since I use this I don't know if I have to press something to get it to am I already connected to this because I did actually test the No, I haven't. So, uh, how do I connect Bluetooth? No, I'm 
Bluetooth device. There's no other button on it. That's just changing the frequency. There's a telephone button in the middle. Ah, there we go, I'm flashing there. Ah, it's gone off again. Beeline Moto. It's got to be that. It says Moto. Beeline. It's got to be that. Try connecting your device again. Got it to flash earlier. No, it's not doing it. Beeline Moto. Gotta be that, isn't it? Hey, I'm ready to go. Okay. So step one done. Okay. So if I do FM, which it's on. Oh, we get some nice interference. would say that's it but be like moto pad so why are you saying it's coming out the speakers and not the Bluetooth other devices. That can't be the right device then, can it? Beeline Moto. Okay. So it's off. Turn it back on. It's showing 53% and it can't be that because it hasn't got a battery in it. 23.89. So why is that not working? Press those two. Doing the volume up and down. But I didn't think it was connected. Because when I try and do the speakers, oh, headphones, BT car stereo. Oh, for some reason, that appeared. So let's just try playing a song. Speakers are going off again now. Uh, okay, uh, just bear with me a sec, guys. I'm going to have a quick troubleshoot on this and see what I can find. I'll bring you back in a sec. Hi, guys, welcome back. I honestly don't know what I did. Um, but it started working. As you can hear, turning the music up from there. And we can uh, just pick a different song. This is April Showers.
they could do with a clean. Hear that? Okay, we need to get some swift cleaning on them. a lot of that is to do with these pots being dirty the noise you can hear and now it seems to not be playing anything <laughs> saying it's not connected again so I had a Bluetooth device so I don't think it's that B9 Moto it's saying it's BT car headphones BT car it said didn't it so connect So I'll turn that off again. Like that. Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth mode. There we go. Connected again. Now you can hear it struggling. I'm wondering if that's the 24 volt. Making it go in and out. Can you hear that? If I turn it off. Let's get another track playing. The play. Right. I'll turn it off. Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth mode. Turn it off. Turn it back on again. Bluetooth mode. Okay. Partial success, we'll say. Disconnecting, but it does go a little bit haywire after time. I'm wondering if that's just a 24 volt input or near a 24 volt input. I think what I might do um, uh, is just put a 12 volt regulator in uh, uh, before that um, little board. Uh, I don't have one with me, so that will have to be the next video, I suppose. That is very hot. So, yeah, I think that's just overheating. So... Yeah, very hot. So, yeah, I think that could be what it is. So, 
Like I say, what we'll do is I'll get a 12 volt regulator, I'll put that in line and um, and then we'll regulate the 12 volt to this instead and we'll see if that improves because that's very warm, it makes me think maybe it's pushing too much power to it. Um, so it might be pushing like 8 or 9 volts to this board um, and that's obviously that's not good for it so yeah so uh, right thanks for watching next one I suppose is going to be a 12 volt regulator installed in this to see if that makes it any better so we did have a partial success but not exactly what I wanted but hey we're all learning together that's the idea of me doing the video so that other people can see what's happening and see what they're doing but you can see how easy it was to get this to tune to this unit so that it would play Bluetooth via the radio, which means you didn't have a lot of work to do. I mean, it would be nice. I might even spend time looking through the board, looking for a 12 volt um, rail that I can come off for this and then that won't matter. So yeah, I can maybe do that with it. So uh, anyway, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, then obviously give us a thumbs down. Uh, either way, if, um, if you did like it, and uh, you considered subscribing i'd really appreciate it it kind of spurs me on to do more videos i know they're not going to be everybody's cup of tea but you know i i do try and uh, i haven't got the most professional setup i'm still doing this with a an old s8 plus uh, galaxy s8 plus phone so yeah um but like i say as i get more and more uh, people interested i'll upgrade to a better camera and things like that but I couldn't justify the expense of a decent camera without obviously the channel being in a certain place. And I don't mean monetized. I don't mean that at all. Just, you know, if I'm getting regular views and people regularly want to see what I'm doing, then obviously I would invest in better equipment for that. So anyway, like I say, uh, thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.